Okay, so hi guys, we are once again back with the part two of our convolution neural network. So previously what we have seen is what a convolution neural network is, or we have also drawn a similarity between the convolution neural network and our human eye, that how it distinguishes the distinct features and helps in categorizing the different classes of an image. So these are some of the basic fundamentals which we have seen the convolution layer, then the filters running over an image, then how the computation from an input image using kernel to an output image is done. And finally, this is the computational file or the, in, uh, the real live example of how it really happens where the filters are run. And finally, the output or the feature map happens. Again, after that, we have seen the pooling layer, then the flattening layer, and finally connecting it to the dense layer, which gives out the output layer finally. Also, these dense layers are known as the fully connected layers, having multiple number of neurons, hidden layers with the neurons. And finally, on back, on back propagation, since there will be lots of loss, a loss in terms of difference between the actual and the uh, predicted outcome. So these needs to be fixed and these are updated using the optimizers by updating those weights and thus reducing those loss function. So today we will discuss two different types of models which I have employed in my project, which is basically a simple first model is a simple CNN model. So let's see the first model and then we shall go to our second model that why we needed the reason, what's the reason need to employ the second model. So simple CNN mod. Here it consists of a very simple configuration and it's a very general type of convolution neural network model. Here we will have one input layer and then few convolution plus pooling layer, then one flattening layer, and then again some few dense layers, dense layers in the sense that it will have the hidden or the hidden layers and then finally one output layer. Here I would like to draw your attention that instead of mentioning a number, here we have mentioned a few convolution layer or a few dense layers. So, so what, why really it's a few, not a, in terms of number that we shall see uh, uh, in the upcoming slides. Okay, so transfer learning. So what really is transfer learning? Transfer learning is a method that focuses on storing knowledge gained while solving one problem and applying it to different but related problems. So what we generally do is a training from the scratch, like we have an input data and then we design our algorithm in such a manner that their features are learned. And finally, we do the classification. But what difference is that with the with our con conventional approach is in transfer learning, instead of designing the model, one second, what we do is that these scratch or whatever has been designed is pre-trained or again used. The knowledge is stored, it, which is used for our uh, upcoming models. So what we will do is that for in our case, we will have our own data set we will have that pre-trained CNN model already, which has been trained, will be in our knowledge. And then finally, using as per our needs, as per our output classes, we will do the classification. So it, it might become a little bit hectic. So let me clarify it in terms of a human perspective. So what it means is suppose like we will have num so we have too many images. Suppose we have cat, dog, elephant, zebra, giraffe, etc. images with us. Now, instead of in, in normal training, what we will do is that we have to draw every images and then color it out to give out the final outcome. So what training transfer learning would do in our human case is that instead of drawing it again and again, what if I say that the outline or the boundary of each of the animals are you know, like those images, we give already give that out, outline. All we need to do is in our final thing is to color the image which we need. Won't life be much of an easy, instead of drawing it again and again, we give the pre-trained pre or the prerequisite or the initial part. So this is what 
and transfer learning is that the knowledge is being stored, which is in the form of drawing, and then applying it to our related problems. Like the like for example, we need the zebra image. So we already have the image drawn. All we need to do is abstract the zebra image and color it out. So this is how our transfer learning is done. Instead of doing from the scratch, we will have some already done and then using it as per our needs. Of which transfer learning is one model which uh, which i have employed is bgg16 so a brief description about bgg16 is that it's it has achieved 92.7 percent top five test accuracy in image net data set so many of them would be familiar with image and data set if not let me introduce you to it image net data set consists of lots of uh, of around 14 million images uh, in the data set which are which belong to over 1000 classes so you can imagine 14 million images over 1000 classes how much computational accuracy would it require to successfully classify those of which the vg16 has acquired 92.7% accuracy which is quite commendable so now most of the neural network models depend on hyperparameters now, what is hyperparameter? If you remember, I have pointed out that in our simple CNN model, I have mentioned the word few instead of specifying some kind of number. So basically, here we use hyperparameter. We can't really define the number because until and unless we know the optimum order level of it, we can't really define the number for which hyperparameter is done to know those numbers. This hyperparameter consists of how many number of neurons we will have, how many number of layers we will have, again, what are different learning rates we will use to optimize this. So it's kind of become a hectic kind of thing to know so many kind of things, uh, so many kind of parameters. So instead of doing that, what BGG16 is has done that instead of having such a large number of hyperparameters, they focus on having a uniform structure, and this makes this model very unique. So you can see here clearly the image. For example, the image of this 224 into 224 into three, the three dimensions, the RGB band. So this image is then passed using 64 kernels. It has a very uniform structure. Here, simply the after each pooling layer where distinct features are extracted, the image will be half while the kernel will be doubled until 512. So you can see 224 becomes 112. Then again, after the pooling layer is done, it becomes 56. Then again, after the pooling layer is done, it becomes 28 to 14 and to finally 7 cross 7 cross 512. So this part, the this feature of convolution and using the max pooling is known as the feature learning or feature extraction. So this part will be already pre-trained in the model, which has already been learned by this model. All we need to do is perform the classification part as per our needs. So in my case, I require 10 output classes. So I will design these classification part. And then finally, I will uh, connect it with our dense layer and give the output. So this is how a transfer learning works. Since this is already been trained, so you can definitely expect that such efficiency will be definitely high. Also, as I've said that I'm working on it, let me glimpse, give a glimpse of it. In the simple CNN model of our, our classifying these, the validation accuracy was found to be around 55%, which is no great, no better than a random guess. While the VGG16, on the other hand, has performed to a validation accuracy of 94%, which clearly shows that the VGG16 has outperformed the simple CNN model. So again, one more part is in this, the Fiji 16, the 16 represents the number of, uh, it has the 16 layers that have the weight. Similarly, there is also VGG 19 as well and many other as well, but I have employed VGG 16 as per our requirement. Yeah.